I mean, you can't turn up to an event and just start grabbing a spirit level out your bag, can you? <laughs> <laughs> can you, can you, Bernie? No. <laughs> so, when are you and why, you know, when are you using, when are you... <laughs> Guys, Dan Hendrickson here. We're at Torquay Golf Club. Get lots and lots of questions coming in regarding reading greens. Now, Lester and I have done a Sunday show on the sort of bare basics of reading greens, things that we do to try and help ourselves putt better when we're out on the golf course, and obviously when we get to other types of golf courses. We're not always playing around Torquay, we play lots of other courses, so getting an idea on what we do has hopefully helped you a little bit. However, my brother Paul has gone into it in a little bit more detail than probably what we do, and he's used a system called Aimpoint. It's not actually Aimpoint that he uses 100%, he's kind of put his own little sort of ideas to it as well. So I thought we'd catch up with Paul today. We'll bring Lester in as well, and Paul can kind of show Lester maybe a little bit of a few tips that might be able to help him with his putting using the system that Paul's got that he's kind of adapted to his own game. Let's go meet up with the guys and, uh, and see, what, uh, see what they can bring to the table for us. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good okay. afternoon. Thought we'd do a little bit of putting practice today or an idea on what we're going to be doing with reading greens. Cool. Lester. Daniel. Um, we've done a video on this already on how we read greens and hopefully those that are watching have already seen yeah. that but we're going to go into a little bit more detail today for you okay? Yeah I could always do with any help and having someone as uh, knowledgeable and as a good golfer as your guest will hopefully help me out a little yeah, bit. Yeah fingers crossed he will. So Paul you've set up something for us um, on the green today yep. for Lester to have a little go with and um, we're going to well talk us through what we've kind of doing or what you've set up and what we're going to be doing. I'm going to do a couple of putts here. Okay. One's twice the length of the other. I'm not exactly sure what the distances are but um, we're just using these as examples. Yeah. I want Lester to go and tell me what line he's trying to hit first one on and then what line he's trying to hit the second one on and um, basically how he goes through reading the putt and then we're going to use how I read putts to see see how we differ. Okay. Are you ready for this? I am, yeah. 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 Okay, let's go. Cool. First putt then, Lester. Shorter of the two. Shorter of the two. I'm looking at this, obviously I know it's, it's going to be right to left because it's the way the ground is laying, it's higher here than there. Obvious, obvious observation. But I'm going to hit this, looking at that, I'm going to hit that right edge. Right edge. Yeah. Okay. And then what about the second putt then? What are you going to line that up to? Okay, so obviously we're increasing the length of the putt, so we're going to add a little bit more break, but I think it's just outside right edge from here. So when you say just outside, what's that, an inch, yeah. two inches? Yeah, half an inch? yeah, I mean, I'm going to hit the first putt on the right edge, and I'm going to start this one maybe an inch outside right. Okay. So I would say that that's a pretty common read. Yeah. You know, most people sort of get themselves down as low as they can, like Lester has there. Um, what do you do that's maybe slightly different to that? Uh, I tried to use, um, I've used a system called Aimpoint and I've kind of simplified it more for myself. Yeah. Um, I don't really feel with your feet, you're supposed to feel with your feet. I usually kind of use my eyes yeah. to read the, the slope of it. Okay. Um, so what we can do is, we, we've got a spirit level out here today, yeah. which we can test the percentage of the slope. And then I've got a, something called a perfect putter, which is a, which rolls the ball. So we can we can basically use um, the Aimpoint Express fingers to then give us an idea of how much it's going to break. Okay. Well, let's get it all set up and um, get a proper read, shall we? So you're on the green doing some, well, spirit levelling. Yeah. What is this? Why have you got a spirit level out and what are you trying to do with that? So on every green or every slope, there is a, you can measure the percentage of it. Yeah. And what this does is it gives a detailed um, percentage. Okay. Digital. And then what you're trying to then work out based on the percentage that it moves is how many fingers you need to put up to measure the, the amount of break. Okay. So you can use, obviously for 1%, you would use one finger, 2%, two fingers, etc., etc., all the way up to, I think they use up to about six or seven. And then beyond that, it's too much slope for it to actually, to measure at right, that point. Okay. So the ball won't hold on that slope. So just getting that spirit level out, I mean, you can't turn up to an event and just start grabbing a spirit level out your bag, can you? <laughs> 
Can you, can you Bernie? No. So when are you actually using a spirit level? Is it just more for practice? Just for practice. Yeah. I think what they also do is if you play in, in the big tournaments, they map the greens and, and on the greens book, you'll have all the percentage of the slopes all written down in a book. So okay. you can use So it. are you going to take this to tournaments away with you to, to different golf courses to get an idea what on the putting green and when you're in practice rounds and stuff like that? This is more for practice, yeah. practice in my own time. And this is tournaments. more about getting a basic understanding of what a, a, a 1%, 2%, 3% yeah. slope looks like yes. on that particular green or that green setup. Yeah, and it's kind of training my eyes so then I can pick with my eyes what 1% is, 2% is. The more I practice doing this, the more my eyes can pick out what the percentages are. Then you've got another contraption down on the floor. Yep. Which you've been sort of it's rolling some putter, and putts it, with. It basically, it's got a laser on it, which you can point, use to aim it. Um, and then basically all it does is it rolls the ball on the line you're trying to start it. it takes out any sort of human error of, of using a putter yeah. and you can get behind and actually see how it's rolling and how much it's breaking. So okay. it's great, once you've established what you think the break is, you can aim this at that point and then you can you can get feedback as to whether you've read it correctly or not. So these two devices really are getting yourself ready to then practice from that position. Yeah, it's tra That's training what... yourself to understand how the putts break. So let's have a little look at what you've established from this first putt then, based on Lester reading it as an, on the right edge. Right, so what you can see, if you ever look down at the spirit level here, percentage of slope is 2.97%. I've measured sort of halfway between the, where the starting point and the hole. Yeah. So this is giving me a roughly a three percent break. So okay. if I use my three fingers, yeah, um, that should give me a starting point for where this where this should be this putt is going. So a start point, basically known as an aim point. Yes, known as the aim point. Okay. Um, so what is three percent or three three percent from that position there? It's about four inches to five inches outside right. From this position here? Yeah. And Lester let, read it as right edge. He read it as right edge. Dear me, I'm, never, I'm not partnering you anymore. <laughs> I mean, you probably could hit this in right edge, but you'd have to hit it so firm, it's probably gonna go three foot, four foot past the hole. And that's a key fact. Yeah. What does this, in like terms of behind the hole, so how yeah. much is this rolling in? How, if you miss the putt, yeah. how much past are you expecting it to be? I think you, what you wanna do is set a standard for yourself that you, you do all the time, and I think yeah. they recommend about 10 inches. Okay. So if you're 10 in, you try to get every putt 10 inches past the hole, and if you do that, then you've got a consistent speed every time. Right, okay. Well, let's now get Lester set up into that position and see if he can actually hold a putt. He's got to ultimately get it on the aim point line to start with. All right? Do you've best. been putting well recently, so you should be all right. <laughs> so first putt, you're going to hit right edge, are you? Yeah, right edge, yeah. Okay. Yep. And you're thinking of 10 inches past, or are you thinking more? I mean... Uh... I'm a lag putter, aren't I? So I should probably hit this. Now I know where the line is. I should hit it outside the hole, shouldn't I? But I would probably be hitting this a little bit firmer from this distance to try and keep it on line longer. Okay. Well, do right. what you do. Okay. Okay. My aim's at right edge. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, I would say you are right edge. Ooh, Missed bottom it left. Lip. Way left, wasn't it? Really? If you think about how much that moves across and that the slope. That was about nine, ten inches past, wasn't it? Better. Definitely more break than I would have expected, especially on that short distance. But would you be hitting it at that pace? That one, that last one you hit, would you be hitting it at that pace? That was generally, a dire, the, yeah, was a dire yeah, in. yeah, I did die into the hole, didn't I? Yeah, you yeah. did. And I think yeah. that's about where you're at. I don't see you banging in. No, I don't, I don't generally bang them in. You used to um, when you were a child. I did, yeah, because I wasn't worried about the one back. No, no you I'm worried. Right, no. <laughs> Now that Paul's setting us up this second putt, yeah. how confident are you feeling that this one now is just outside right edge? I know that this is going to miss because obviously the first putt would break a lot more than what I personally believed it would. Yeah. So by hitting this just outside, there's no way I can hold it unless I hit it hard and take the break out, which is not what you want to do. What percentage are we getting now, Paul? Similar sort of percentage. It's, it's 2.88, so yeah, it was. Um, 2.97 I think from up there so we're now pretty much 3% all the way through this longer putt. It's about a foot. 
greens are pretty true, aren't they, to be fair? Very true, yeah. For a pitching green, it's not bad. It's very good. I was given that then, the aim point was saying, because it's double the distance, it's pretty much gonna be double the break. Yeah. And that's what's so good about using the fingers, that if you, if you ever measure and come back, the further you're back, the more that distance gets. So that's what's really good about this, is, is a lot of people will pick the same line from that distance, and they will from the further distance, and they'll pick it from the same line, thinking it's gonna pretty much stay the same distance, but it shows you how much more it does break more from a longer part. And I've seen people move their arms backwards and forwards, yep. so the different arm lengths sticking out is stretched out, and then obviously one pulled more in towards you. How does that work? The, the theory behind that is the further you've got it away, the smaller your fingers are, Right. So therefore the less break. Okay. The more you bring it in, the bigger your fingers get, so the bigger the break. And what you would do is you would get calibrated based on the stimp meter or the speed of the greens. So where we were um, up at um, Forest of Arden, yeah. I was having to bend my arms because the greens were quicker. Yeah. If I come and play locally or, or, or normal golf courses, I have to put my hand straight out because the greens are slower. So on an average, let's say, well, what, um, what's the stint meter on most golf courses in the UK round now? Ten? No, probably nine, I would say. Nine to ten? Yeah. And what, so what are you doing with your arm on an average? So people can give it yeah. themselves a bit of an average on this. I would say my arm on an average is pretty much straight out. Okay. And then, as it gets quicker, I bring it slightly in, depending slightly on Slightly in, depending on the pace. And that's, that's when this thing starts to get quite complicated, isn't it, for people? It can be, yeah. You, you need to do um, a bit of practice, practice it. with it, get used to it. But, um, but once you've got a system, and my system isn't exactly as, as it gets taught, yeah. I've kind of changed mine around and, and adapted it for me. So what, what I'm saying here isn't necessarily by the textbook, it's, it's what's worked for me in the past. Yeah. I know the first putt we're going to use is the one how I would have said yeah. it. Yeah. And it's not to make you look silly, no, but it's just to give you well, a Well, I know it's going to miss left, isn't it? You know it's going to miss left, yeah, 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 but let's give it a go. So you're aiming this an inch outside yeah. the uh, right edge for us, yeah? Is that yeah, I think that's about right. Really went again, right at the end, isn't it? Were you reading that when you're up there doing your percentage? It's it's moving more at the end. Does the percentage get stronger at the end? That's slow. It's not. I don't think it's the percentage get stronger. It's the fact that the golf ball is dying in speed. Ah, yeah, so therefore. Okay gravity is pulling it more down the slope. Right. So the faster it's going, the less the, the slope is affecting it. That's a key And then as it's key dying, reading, though, yeah, it's, it? it's all gravity. Yeah. So can you help him now line up to where he kind of needs to be? So I, I would be giving this about 10 inches outside right, eight to 10 inches. Wow. Whoa. Bernie, yeah. Bernie. That is why I don't hold any putts. Yet. Yet. After today yeah. is gonna be a different, different little Lester. Yeah. Come on then. Less than a little. Happy with that? Happy with that pull, yeah. Dying round the back door yeah. there, wasn't it? Started too far right, didn't it? Started too far right? Started that a little bit too far right. Yeah, let's try that again. Again, I think that speed was, you know, you're thinking 10 inches past. Oh. Pulled it. And that's why the device is so good, isn't it? To yeah. get it rolling on the right spot and it Absolutely. gives you a, a good gauge on that. But it's, it's, I think it's... What's interesting is it's difficult to know if you miss a putt, whether it was you or the slope. Yeah. So by using that device, it, it just eliminates you out of the equation so you can read it properly. That one, oh, he got that, did you? <laughs> oh. 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 oh, here's what I did earlier. Scott, are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's try it again for the camera, shall oh, we? Joking. I can't do it twice. I was always told, if you do something right the first time, you don't need to do it the second time. <laughs> you have to lower the tone every time we do a video. I mean, that's, is that, that is an eye-opener to you, isn't it? It's an eye-opener to me. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense what Paul's saying. Um, I feel like I do probably need to be a little bit more technical on my putting. Maybe that'll help me hold more putts and become a better putter. I think you can 
become more technical when it comes to the actual reading of the putt, but then the feel still has to take over in the fact of, like, you don't necessarily use a line on the ball, you feel where you should be lining yeah, that I mean, putt up to, we, and also the speed, you've got to feel yeah, the speed. I mean, we've always been, personally, we've been field players, haven't we? We, we tend to like to hit shots and feel it maybe not complete textbook at times, yep. similar to my putting, you stand up there when I was a good putter or younger, stand up there, I'd hit so many putts on that same line, bang, straight in, bang, straight in. It's just repetitive, isn't it? But now I feel like I need a little bit more help and something like this, I think I could game and improve my putting. Anything else to say? Um, I think it's just really important that people practice their reading of the greens. I see a lot of people blaming their stroke or blaming their technique for missing putts and there's not many people who actually start blaming their read of putts and I think that can then spiral into into having negative thoughts about how you putt and, and I think only bad things come from that so I'd like to see more people practicing their, their uh, alignment of, um, of reading the greens. Listen, that's no different than using a golf ball with a line on it, isn't it? You know, yeah. people have to, you know, you can't just stick a line down and be off and running. You need to practice that actual... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, using you, that technique as such, don't you? Yeah, you, you do need to practice using the line. A lot of people use stand over the ball and then they, they kind of go to feel. And I think um, you've got to ingrain that feel with the line and, and keep using it and using it and getting familiar with it. And I think people who, who can't get on with a line, there's generally a problem there that, that they need to kind of address. So there you go, there's a little insight into what Paul does when he reads greens. Obviously there's a bit of a science behind it, Paul's been on the course and done it, but he's put his own little touches onto it at the same time. Really good eye-opener for myself, certainly. I've always wanted to do a bit more with the aim point sort of ideas, and listening to what Paul had to say today has really sort of opened my eyes. And for Lester as well, I think it will really help with his reading of greens moving forward. Let me know, put your comments down below, I'd like to hear what you have to say. Have you done an aim point course yourself? Do you use something similar? Similar to this sort of technique or do you purely go on feel I'd like to hear what you have to say put your comments down there don't forget if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button give us a thumbs up if you like what you're seeing and as always stay safe and we'll catch up with you again soon